Well, Barkley's job is to give his opinions, and uh, I think Charles does it as well as anyone uh, who maybe ever has done it from an opinion standpoint. But like you said, Michael, I have absolutely no problem, uh, whether it's me giving an opinion or Barkley giving an opinion, and having that player give his opinion about the opinion that was initially given. So I have no problem either way. I just thought it came across as weak. I mean, here is a superstar. He's LeBron James. What would he worry about what Charles Barkley has to say? I understand from a personal standpoint, you'd love to be able to get back at them, but isn't the ultimate say when somebody sticks a microphone in your face or asks you, what would you think Charles Barkley said? I don't care. Isn't I don't care better than coming up with, with a response that also had some personal attacks to it as well? Well, I think, you know, we want honesty from these players. And, or I think most people do, and instead of platitudes, uh, you got to look into someone that I think uh, was hurt by, you know, what Charles said, you know, and Charles is an all-time great player, and I think these players, they value uh, what he what he says more so than someone like me who never, you know, played the game, so... Uh, I, I understand. Listen, you can get stung by some of this criticism. It it does matter. Nobody, I don't care who, who you are, uh, some of the best players I've ever been around have been the most sensitive uh, to criticism. And they either hear it, read it, or someone tells them about it. And so, um, but I think what gets misconstrued is, just because Barkley uh, maybe had said some things uh, that he disagreed with as far as how LeBron handled some situations. I don't think that diminishes Charles's uh, admiration for the greatness that LeBron James has displayed throughout his career or how he's conducted himself. To me, James' basketball career is amazing, but the most amazing thing is he has never been involved in any type of off-the-court incident that would reflect badly on him uh, at all. And that's why uh, it, it, it's kind of a cheap shot. But, Jeff, I don't have a problem with LeBron saying all the things that Barkley's done bad and, you know, pointing out this is the guy that's judging me when all I've done is bring honor to the NBA. And, you know, a lot of people on Twitter and the callers are saying LeBron's whiny. But I, I'm glad that you said what you just said. Uh, uh, being around superstar athletes with the Yankees, these guys hear everything and they use everything as motivation and it puts a chip on their shoulder. They're all sensitive. To get to that level, you have to be sensitive. I'm sure Michael Jordan was sensitive. Well, think about it. Just how many times people probably along their career path said there's no way you'll make it or once you make it, there's no way you'll be an all-star or once you're an all-star, there's no way you're going to go down uh, as one of the all-time greatest. And I think you have to have incredible belief in yourself. But you also, uh, as you said, Michael, with some of the Yankees that you were around, there is a sensitivity to that criticism. And so I, I think, listen, if I was James, I think you know he might been, have been better served by just overlooking it and going on. But I don't think you can begrudge a guy giving his opinion after, like for myself, I, I do this, I give my opinion. If someone comes back at me about my opinion, I, I, I don't think I can have a problem with that because, you know, I'm going to do my job and they have every mm. right to respond. Yeah, just where does it end, though? Because I'm sure Charles isn't going to stop. Matter of fact, Charles might will. amp it up I a little bit. Will. No, I think he will. I, I, I don't think he's... It, because, again, I don't think it's personal from Charles' standpoint. I don't think it's somebody that he dislikes or doesn't have respect for. He was asked a specific question, as I, as I, as I think, back to seeing it, about how he thought um, uh, James handled that situation. And he gave his honest opinion. And, again, that's what he's paid for. It's also one of the reasons why he's so great at what he does, because he's unafraid – you know, he's not just somebody who gives a strong opinion about, you know, the mediocre player who has no power uh, over him. He'll go at the best coaches, the best players, and he'll give his honest opinion there. That's why he's so good. Um, but I don't think it's it's born out of any disrespect for LeBron James or trying to negate uh, just what a great 
player he has been in our league. Talk with Jeff Van Gundy. Jeff, what do you think is wrong with the Cavaliers? They've lost eight games this month, more than the Warriors have won- have lost the entire season. Uh, is LeBron right? Do they need a, a point guard, somebody who can handle the ball? Well, again, I think if the Warriors weren't so dominant, James's frustration would be much more limited. Right. Because he would think, hey, if we get J.R. Smith back healthy, we add somebody either – a signing, uh, a waiver wire pickup, you know, someone that's, you know, cut and we pick him up, we'll be fine. But in light of Durant signing, I think he's on edge because he sees that the talent gap between the Warriors and his team has grown and grown exponentially since the end of the finals. You know, it was a great, I mean, a great job by the Cavaliers last year coming back from 3-1. But going forward, I think it's very sobering when someone who's as intelligent as James is about the game, he understands, you know, just how great this Warrior team is. All right, how do you think this mellow thing works itself out? Have the Knicks put themselves in a situation where it'll be impossible to get a decent amount of value back in a, in a uh, trade? It's interesting. You know, again, I think, and I don't know where uh, the other sports are in this, but you know, very few players have no trade clauses in basketball. And, you know, Carmelo, uh, when he resigned with the Knicks, when Phil Jackson resigned him, they gave him, you know, a boatload of money, which was expected. And the no trade clause, I think, uh, was a big factor for him, but also, a, a you know, a big give up by the Knicks. You know, I'm sure that, you know, kept them up a little bit because you do lose – control of trying uh, to move on or move forward if you think that's what you need to do. So LeBron James, I mean, uh, Carmelo Anthony's in total control. He can go where he wants or stay if he wants. And certainly by limiting the number of teams that he would, you know, agree to go to, you definitely limit how much you can get in return if you decide to go that way. Uh, It's a very interesting and a difficult situation for the Knicks and for Carmelo Anthony, uh, particularly for the Knicks since they have so little control. Is Carmelo, has he taken as precipitous a drop as it's made out to be? Has he hurt this Nick team? Has he hurt the progression of Porzingis, Jeff? Well, those are all different questions. I'll start with the last one. I do not think he's hurt Porzingis' development. I think what everybody has to do is um, hold everybody accountable for their own development. And I think Porzingis is developing fine. I think he's, you know, he's had some injury issues uh, lately that I think has slowed him even when he's come back. But I think he's developing at a very good rate and is on track to be an all-star caliber player. Carmelo Anthony as it is today, is their best player. And he shows, you know, his greatness not as often as he once did because, you know, father time, that whole thing about being undefeated, Mm -hmm. it's true. Uh, I don't think he's as mobile as he once was. He doesn't get to the free throw line uh, or to the basket like he did. But we still see these some great, great performances. And as it stands today, he's clearly their best player. Now, some say, all right, blow it up. Let's build something around Porzingis. Have you seen enough, Coach, to believe that you can build a franchise around Porzingis? Well, I think you certainly can build around Porzingis, but so much about building around uh, a very good player, and that's what he is right now, hopefully on the ascension to a great player, is you have to surround them with the right pieces. And so... As much, as much as if you decide to go that route, if the Knicks decide to go that route to build around Porzingis, uh, then it's imperative that you get good fits. It's not, you know, as the Patriots always talk about, um, it's not about acquiring talent. It's about building a team. And a, building a team starts with the proper fits. And so they just have to make sure uh, if they do decide to build around Porzingis that they get the right fits around him. 